After the successful heist in the Aldeni garrison, Kasten decides to come home to pick Marva and B up so they can escape altogether. But to his surprise, his mother chooses to stay. What will Kasten do? This is the last six episodes of the Disney Plus original, Star Wars, Andor. Due to the recent events in Aldani, the ISB conducts an emergency meeting. At this time, Admiral Euleren states that to re-impose public order, the tribute tax of any sector that's harboring partisan activity will be five times the amount stolen from the garrison. Also, the use of any local custom or traditional festivity as cover for rebel activity will result in the permanent revocation of imperial tolerance. Then, the Emperor will convene an emergency session of the Senate to propose a law that will allow the ISB to use any means necessary to deal with and take down anti-imperial activities. In the meantime, the ISB will implement the Public Order Resentencing Directive, also known as P.O.R.D., in the entire Empire. In this sense, any criminal offense, even those that don't affect the Empire, will be deemed as Class 1 offense. Because of that, every fine must be paid in full immediately and the duration of prison sentences will be re-evaluated. Afterward, Detra is not happy with the outcome of the meeting, stating that they're actually playing in the hands of the rebels. She believes that the overreaction to the Aldani incident is exactly what the rebels wanted. Meanwhile, Mon visits Luthen in his gallery and asks if he has something to do with the heist in the garrison. Vaguely confirming nor denying it, Luthen just says that rebellion is expensive and they need funds. Mon, on the other hand, thinks that it will make it harder for her to push laws that will prioritize the welfare of the citizens because the empire will now focus on strengthening and flexing its power, hence the people will suffer. Just then, Luthen declares that it's exactly what they need so the people will finally wake up and see how cruel and unjust the empire is. Later on, Clea, Luthen's assistant, meets with Vel, who turns out to be Senator Mon's cousin. Clea commends her and her team for their work but she orders her to find and kill Cashin as he is now a threat to them because he knows about Luthen's involvement in the rebellion. Speaking of Cashin, he goes home to Ferex and Marva, tells him that Ferex is under full imperial authority now. Hearing this, Cashin states that he now has enough credit for them to escape to a new sector where nobody knows them. Surprised, Marva is speechless so he tells her to rest first and that they will move the next morning. Afterward, Cassian goes to meet Bix who tells him that Ferex is not safe for him because the people blamed him for all the chaos from before. In this sense, anyone can snitch on him and alert any patrolling stormtrooper or imperial guard for the reward. On his way home, he hears stormtroopers coming so he quickly hides. Just then, Cassian remembers how his father was hanged by the Empire just because he stopped some protesters that were throwing rocks at the stormtroopers. The following day, Cashin is ready to leave, but is surprised to know that Marva is not coming with him. According to her, she decided that she will stay to join the rebellion and fight the Empire. As it turns out, the Hest in Aldani inspired her enough to fight for Ferex and the memories of Clem. In turn, Cashin says it will be hard for him to leave because he will worry about her, but Marva insists on staying. Yet, before he goes, his mother tells him to stop looking for his sister, pointing out that there were no survivors in Canari back when they took him. With that, he leaves Ferex without his mother and goes to Nyamos. Unfortunately, Cashin gets caught immediately by a shore trooper after he is falsely accused of being part of an anti-imperial activity in the area. And because of P.O.R.D., the original six-month sentence in his charges becomes six years. Meanwhile, another meeting is being held in ISB where Dedra is insisting again on the connection of the recent thefts of imperial military components to anti-imperial activities. Upon presenting evidence to back her claim up, Partagas finally gives her a go signal to proceed with the investigation and transfers the jurisdiction of Morlana I under her. Because of that, she immediately calls on Karn, who's now working in the corporation, to know everything that happened in Ferex. In this sense, ISB is now aware of the existence of Cashin. Aside from that, they are now also onto the man that was with him during the chaos that they cannot identify just yet, referring to Luthen. Given the moniker Axis, Detra declares that he's their shot into taking down the rebellion once and for all. On the other hand, over Senator Mon's place, a gathering is being held. There, she talks to her trusted friend, Tay, about the problem with her account. As it turns out, Mon continues with this plan of hers despite Luthen's vocal disapproval. Afterward, Mon takes the opportunity to get into other senators' good graces for them to give her their votes for the upcoming session. Going back to Cassian, he's now transferred to Narkina 5 where he will spend his six-year sentence working every day. To his confusion, the guard orders him and the other prisoners to remove their shoes. 
As it turns out, the floor in the prison is made up of tungsten steel, and electrocuting them will be their punishment if they do something wrong. There, he meets Kino, the head of their shift. Kino then takes him to his table where he meets his team consisting of Jembok, Saul, Taiga, Yulaf, Ham, and Nelshi. Together, along with other tables, they are working on star-shaped equipment that is, for some reason, very important to the Empire. One month later, Kashin has fully adapted to the work and environment in a labor prison. However, it has also revealed that he's already working on an escape plan with other prisoners. Meanwhile, Bix, Brasso, and the daughter of Ferrix, a social club where Marva was the former president, are all taking care of her in Kashin's absence. At this time, Bix tries to contact Luthen to ask about Kashin, but Clea tells him that it's dangerous to keep the communication with Ferrix open. Because of that, he is forced to cut the line down, leaving Bix hanging. Also, Vel and Sinta are already on the sector and are waiting for his arrival, not knowing that he's imprisoned somewhere in the galaxy. Some time later, the noise of metal craps rings over Ferrix. Bix immediately goes to where the commotion is and finds out that the Imperial Guards took Salman last night to the hotel where they made it their base of operation. To make matters worse, the officer identifies her and orders her arrest as well. They then take her to the hotel where she sees Salman wasted and almost dying. Dedra orders the guards to take him outside, but the officer suggests putting him down for good instead and she lets him be. After that, Dedra starts questioning Bix about the whereabouts of Kashin. But she refuses to cooperate, resulting in Dedra putting a device in her ear that emits a mind-torturing noise that hurts people's brains, which is the same torture method they used on Salman to get the information they need out of her. When they're done, Dedra reminds the officer that they need to keep Bix alive so she can identify Axis for them. Then, she flies back to Coruscant to report everything she discovered to Major Partagas, ultimately connecting Kashin's thievery of the Starpath unit to his involvement in the Althani incident. Concurrently, at the Senate, Mon declares her opposition to the Declaration of P.O.R.T. And despite her efforts to gather votes, most of the senators approved of this move of the Empire to secure their power. After the session, Mon is visibly disappointed, but what surprises her more is when her driver tells her that her cousin is in her house. Due to that, she goes home immediately to see Vel. Mon is worried about her, but Vel insists that her duty to the rebellion is her priority. According to her, she just came here to see her and settle for a short while. Hearing this, the senator reminds her that she still needs to show to the public that she's a spoiled rich girl so the ISB or the Empire will not be suspicious of her constant absence. Over at Narkina 5, a new man is dropped on Cashin's shift after one of them offed himself last night. Knowing that the elevator only goes down every time the guards will pick up the dead or bring a new man, Cashin tells another prisoner that either of the two circumstances is their only chance of getting out of the labor room. After their shift, Taga is conversing with another prisoner at level 2 using sign language. According to them, something is going down in level 2. Just then, a short power interruption occurs, but the prisoners are just ordered to go back to their quarters. There, Kashin tries to convince Kino into joining his plan to escape. However, Kino believes that he will be released soon so he doesn't want to risk being a fugitive. The next day, a rumor starts spreading that everyone on level 2 is electrocuted to death. In the meantime, in Mon's residence, Tay visits the senator to tell her that he finds a way for her to get out of trouble. However, it might get ugly for her and her reputation. As it turns out, Tay talked to a man named Davo who will be their cover story as to why she had a huge gap in her account. Mon calls the man a thug, but Tay says he's the best shot they got. At this time, she asks what Davo asked in return, and to her surprise, he told Tay that he just wanted an audience with the senator in her house. Left with no other choice, Mon agrees and she meets with Davo. And to her shock, he wants his son to meet her daughter, trying to get the two children to know each other. Knowing this, Mon says she will not do it, but Davo still gives her a chance to think about it. Meanwhile, the ISB catches a rebel pilot that was picked up at a customs check. Because of that, they discovered that there was supposed to be a raid in a power station upon putting the rebel under torture. In this sense, they set up an ambush on one of the rebel leaders named Krieger. After a while, an ISB supervisor Lieutenant Jung meets with Luthen, telling him about the agency's plan to take Krieger out. As it turns out, Jung is Luthen's eyes and ears inside ISB, giving him various intel for quite some time already. Unexpectedly, Luthen tells him to get on with it. According to him, if the ambush fails, ISB will know that there's a mole in their ranks and he cannot risk losing Jung inside. Going back to Narkina 5, just as their shift ends, Yulaf suddenly has a stroke. 
Due to that, Cassian and Kino stay behind to look after him while the others are forced to go back to their quarters. Shortly, a prisoner, who's also the medic, shows up and finds that it's impossible to save Yulaf at this point. Kino insists that the old man just has a few days in his sentence and he just needs to get through the month so he can go home. However, the medic sadly says Yulaf is the luckiest of them all because he gets to really get out of prison. Hearing this, Cashin realizes that he knows something about what happened in level 2 and asks him about him. According to the medic, the guards made a mistake by putting somebody who's supposed to be released from level 4 to level 2 and somebody recognizes him. Because of that, the guards killed everyone on level 2 so their secrets will not be revealed. As it turns out, no one really gets to be released and the prisoners are just getting transported to another prison after their sentence. Because of that, Kino finally decides to join Cashin in his plan of breaking out. The following day, by taking advantage of the new man coming down to replace Yulaf, Cassian, and the others set their plan in motion. By destroying the water system, it starts to spill all over the working area. Because of that, when the guard turns on the electric floor upon the commotion starting, the whole room short circuits, eventually disabling the electricity on the floor. With that, everyone starts climbing out of the room and arming themselves. Then, floor by floor and room by room, they start taking down the guards to give other prisoners a chance to escape. Meanwhile, Cassian and Kino take control of the command center where Kino reveals the truth to all the prisoners that nobody is really getting out of prison. But he also encourages them to fight for their own freedom, declaring that this is their only way out. Due to that, every prisoner makes their move and goes to the top floor, eventually reaching the docking station. There they start jumping into the water to swim away from the prison. However, it is revealed that Kino doesn't know how to swim. Yet he's still proud that he leads many men to their freedom. Cashin tries to get to him, but he bumps into some jumping prisoners, causing him to fall to the sea as well. Since then, the prisoners part ways with only Cashin and Nelshi sticking together. After some time, they find two Caridian fishermen that have a ship. Cassian and Nelshi try to run for the ship but they're caught immediately. The aliens then recognize them as prisoners and plan to turn them in at first. But since they hate the Empire as well for spoiling their water and ruining their livelihood, they let the two men go. Because of that, Cashin takes Nelshi to Nyamos for him to get all the credits that he stashed back at a hotel. He then calls his friend Sanwen through a secret channel and asks him to tell Marva that he's okay and that he's coming back for her. However, all Sanwen can say to him is that he's feeling sorry for him. Unfortunately, Cashin will never get to see her again because Marva has already passed away. Everyone in Ferex is saddened by the news. Brasso and the daughters of Ferex are the people taking care of his funeral, planning to give her a grandiose one to celebrate her life. In Ferex, the dead are turned into a brick by mixing their ashes with mortar and local stone dust. Then, they will be put on a wall as if they're becoming a part of Ferex. Knowing this, Cashin is lost for words and silently goes back to Melshi. Asking if he's okay, he tells him that everything is fine. At this time, Melshi points out that they cannot stop fighting now and that the galaxy should know the truth about the Empire. And with that, they part ways as Melshi goes to spread the truth while Cashin goes home to find his true purpose. Meanwhile, Luthen goes to meet another rebel named Saw to tell him about the impending doom of their colleague Krieger. Hearing it, Saw states that they need to warn him. However, Luthen points out that doing it will put his mole inside ISB at risk and will make the Empire more cautious about them. He also adds that Krieger will be a great sacrifice for the cause as the Empire will see itself as invincible after taking him down. Thinking about it, Saw finally agrees not to warn Krieger about it, seeing the sense in what Luthen is implying. And as Luthen expected, ISB celebrates as soon as they take down Krieger, thinking that no lowly rebel groups can match them ever. Afterward, Luthen receives a call from Clea, asking him to go home. He, on the contrary, wants to go after Cassian, stating that they will be in trouble if he gets captured. Clea then reasons that Ferex is a very dangerous place right now, but Luthen assures her that he will find a way to settle it. However, their call gets interrupted when Luthen gets stopped by an Imperial Sector patrol ship. At first, he pretends to be a hauler and presents them with a working ID. But as soon as they pull his ship into theirs using a tractor beam, Luthen fires his thrusters and fights his way out of reach of the patrol. Over at Ferex, Xanwen discreetly tells Brasso that Cashin called him and that he told him about his mother. In turn, Brasso asks if he warns Cashin that going back is extremely dangerous, but Sanwon points out that it was just a short conversation. Unfortunately, Nurchi turns out to notice the two men and starts getting suspicious of them. At the same time, Cinta goes home only to find Vel waiting for her. 
She says she was about to pick her up from the terminal but she saw Detra dressed as a civilian so she had to follow her. Everyone is anxious about the arrival of Cashin that no one noticed that he's actually in Ferrix already. Cashin visits the wall memorial of his father, remembering the good things that they had together. After that, he goes to their house where Pegla sees him. After offering his condolences, Pegla shares with him that their house is now for sale. Hearing this, he asks where Bix is and Pegla tells him that she is imprisoned by the Imperial Guards. Overwhelmed, Castin decides to listen to Nemec's manifesto. According to him, the yearning for freedom occurs spontaneously and without instruction. So, no matter how big or small the action for insurrection is, it is the right way to move forward. Nemec's manifesto ends with him saying that everyone should at least try. The next day, everyone is preparing for the funeral of Marva. The daughters of Ferrix prepare a band and the people are lining up to pay their respect to her, while the Imperial Guards and the Rebels are watching out for any sign of Cashin. Two parties with two different goals are all waiting for Cashin and her to show up. Karn and Mos, who are pretending to be a civilian, also made an effort to travel to Ferrix after knowing what happened to Cashin's mother. Before the ceremony begins, Differ makes it clear that he wants Cashin alive, so she orders the snipers to pull out. After that, she just receives the news about the fall of Krieger, but she's not happy that they killed everyone. According to her, they could have gotten more information from the rebels if they put them under questioning or torture. But ISB is more focused on showing their power to the entire galaxy so they didn't think of that, not knowing that this is what Luthen wants. Speaking of whom, Luthen arrives in Ferrix. Meanwhile, Brasso meets with Cashin who's in hiding with the help of Pegla. At this time, Castin starts venting out his regrets, stating that they argue before he left and that he shouldn't have left her at all. Brasso, on the other hand, tells him that everything is fine and that Marva passed peacefully. According to him, Marva says that none of this is Cashin's fault. She also says that Cashin already knows everything he needs to know and feels everything that he needs to feel. And with that together, Marva believes that Cashin will be an unstoppable force for good. At this time, the two friends part ways as Brasso prepares for the funeral while Cashin makes his way to save Bix at the hotel. However, Nurchi notices that Pegla is acting suspiciously and realizes that Cashin must be with him earlier. In that sense, he tips the Imperial Guards about the last location of Pegla, assuring them that Cashin is there. But as they check on it, no one is in there. Yet, Dedra is too smart and keen not to see where Cashin ran off so she immediately orders the Imperial Guards to go after him. At this time, the ceremony for Marva's funeral begins. The people of Ferrix gather in the plaza to witness Marva's last message to all of them. Unfortunately for Bix, all she can do is listen from the hotel. At the same time, the Imperial Guards, Stormtroopers, and Death Troopers also mobilize to keep the people in line. As B goes in the middle, he plays the last recording of Marva as she tries to stand and stay strong for the last time. Marva begins her speech by saying how grateful she was for being a daughter of Ferrix, but she also says that they've been cowering for so long. According to her, the greed of the Empire will stop at nothing until they conquer the galaxy like a disease to a human or a rust to a metal, and it is their collective duty to wake up and fight against oppression and injustice. Marva's message ends with her encouraging everyone to fight the Empire, stating that if she could do it again, she will start fighting them long ago. Because of this, the officer flips B to stop the message from broadcasting so Brasso retaliates. This then causes a riot to occur. At this time, Wilman throws a makeshift explosive at the Imperial Guards as revenge for killing his father. In turn, an officer orders the troopers to open fire, killing many civilians. But they're not afraid to fight back as they are all empowered by Marva's words. They even catch Dedra and are about to beat her to death, but she's luckily saved by Karn. While all of this is happening, Cashin finally rescues Bix and takes her to the shipyard where Pegla, Brasso, B, Wilman, and Marva's friend, Jezzy, are waiting for them so they can escape altogether. But to Brasso's surprise, Cashin will not go with them. Yet, he promises that he will find them soon. And with that, Pegla releases the ship, allowing the others to escape Ferrix while he and Cashin stay behind. Meanwhile, Luthen, Vel, and Sinta find their way to escape the chaos. After a while, Luthen finally reaches his ship. But just as he boards his ship, he finds out that Andor is actually waiting for him. Knowing that Luthen wants to kill him, Andor says that he will not bother fighting back if he still wishes to do it. But, if he will not, Kashin tells Luthen that he needs to take him in. Hearing this, Luthen smiles as he knows that a man like Kashin Andor will be a great asset to the rebellion. Just as Mon finally agrees to the terms of Davo for her to continuously support the endeavor of the rebellion. 
Season 1 ends with the revelation that the star-shaped components that Cassian and the others were making back in Narkina 5 are actually for the construction of a Death Star. The first season of Andor received a 96% rating from the critics on Rotten Tomatoes. By providing a well-grounded perspective of life during the Empire's time, the series managed to tackle serious real-life historical and political matters maturely. However, being in the middle of a big franchise-slash-universe is a challenge to invite some audience. But since the show is done from the perspective of a normal guy, it's not hard to connect and root for him. Hence, it will be easy to digest the whole series. Overall, Andor is a really great series for both fans and those who want to try to immerse themselves in the Star Wars universe.